But, you know, for me, it's got to be on the page, you know? Now, I've taken some risks in the past where it's not on the page. And? But I've had very, very strong instincts about something. Gladiator was one. The script, um, you know, forgive me, David Franzoni, the original <laughs> yes. writer, but it was terrible, yeah. you know? Um, they had whole sequences where the difference between one chariot and the other chariot was explained on the basis of you know, the difference between Ferraris and Maseratis and all that sort of stuff. They had sequences where the gladiators, which is actually true, but nobody today would believe it, would, 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 be, uh, would take endorsement money from olive oil companies. You know, there was, yeah. <laughs> it was just stuff which it's like, that's not going to swing, yeah. you know. Um, but I had the thing in front of me. It's like, you know, it's 180 AD or 184 AD. You're a Roman general, and Ridley Scott's the director, you know? And I, that was kind of, particularly at that stage, you know, of what I was doing, I'd just come off, um, I'd done Mystery Alaska, and then followed by The Insider. And I was on my way home to Australia, and they really wanted me to meet Ridley before I, I got on the plane. And I read the script, and I was like, man, it's ridiculous. <laughs> but, um, there's that thing of like I just having seen his work and you know uh, you know a few decisions I've made in my career have, uh, have been on the same basis that that you know well they won't be making another one of these for a while will they you know <laughs> so if you don't take it now you'll never get to where the, the so Roman either you costume. either you've got to like the script a lot or B you've got to really want to work with the director either the narrative is complete in on the page or the potential of that narrative is so clear that you can take a risk that you'll grind it together and you'll find it, you know. And my conversation with Ridley, he was all about visual aspects. He showed me um, a painting by uh, Jerome, I think, and then a few other things and just talked. And he had such a robust quality to him, you know. Um, and I, I talked to him about a few details. And he said, he just said things like, that'd be great, do that, you know? I trust you. Yeah, I, I, you know, and, and all the way through the process of making that movie, we were finding the things that people remember from that film. And, you know, I mean, you're really lucky if you have one film like that in, in your lifetime, right? In your lifetime? Yeah, just, you know, I'm not... I but you've had more than one. I mean, you've had a beautiful mind. Yeah, but that's a different film. That's different. There's, the, there's been some successes and there's been some great critical successes. Right. But that thing touches people on a different level, you know. It's now 10 years or 11 years since we made it. And that film still plays a prime time on television, you know, it's still... What do you think it is? Um, Human th spirit? Yeah, that journey's pretty, yeah. pretty full on. And, and what I also encouraged Ridley about was just let me f fully express him emotionally, you know, because... Uh, occasionally, you know, we have people say, can't believe you won the Academy Award for that when it's just an action movie. And it's like, well, you should maybe look at it again or, <laughs> yeah. and remind yourself what he goes through, you know? Um, like when he comes across the burnt and um, the burnt body of, uh, of his wife and, and son, you know? Uh, and what well, he I goes through that there, you know? And I remember that scene. I, I said to Ridley, you know, when, when we get around to doing this thing with the wife and son, um, that's going to be full snot, you know? And he said, what does that mean? <laughs> and I said, well, he's going to be torn yeah. apart. He's yeah. going to be emotionally torn yeah. apart, you know? He's, it's, it's going to come from the deepest part of him and it's going to be uncontrollable, right. his grief, you know? And you got to be there to be ready for me well, I being do, I, uncontrollable. Yeah, well, I just wanted him to know that that's how big that moment is, you know? So we got there on the day on this, in this particular location. We were over the back of um, Malta somewhere. And he said, look, you know, start 200 metres down there. I'll have cameras on you. Walk yeah. towards the house, you know. Uh, remember, you've, you know, you've, you've ridden your horse till it's died. You've, you know, you've come all the way from right. basically the, the <laughs> Italian-German border to get here to Spain, you know. Um, some on a horse and then some on foot. Uh, you know, come, come across there. So, you know, I hit this mark. Stare at your wife. She's about 25 feet away, you know. Mm. Uh, it was a pair of feet nailed mm. to a... Mm. A, a board, and uh, he said, and just hit that mark because I've got this nice lighting state there. And I said, Oh no, man, I've got to go and see it. He goes, Look, there's your mark. 
<laughs> look up. You're going to give me all the snot you like. I would but, like to be there at that know, moment when he said, said no, 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 no. I've no. got to go and you see you. you got to hit your mark. He goes, I've only got a pair of feet, mate. I don't have your wife. I've just got a pair of feet. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, but I've, I've got to go and touch her. I don't care. I'll, I'll kiss her toe or something, you know? And yeah. he goes, oh, that's going to look ridiculous. I says, no, it won't, man. Yeah. You know? I've got to get to her, Ridley. Otherwise, I, I, you know, not only have I ultimately failed, I fail her again yeah. by not going to her, you know, even but though I, she's dead. But in the end, Ridley probably loved that. Yeah, yeah. Well, well after I, he saw the, it, the, but the, he probably loved it even as an attitude on the part of an actor. Oh, you can see him. He, he possesses good ideas the minute they're in the ether. Yeah, you know, oh, yeah. The, yeah, yeah, they're out of your mouth. <laughs> he, he just <laughs> grabs them just like you said, and then yeah. we'll re-explain to you. Yeah. And why make it, and make why it your idea works well, <laughs> you know? Why his idea? <laughs> yeah. Because it's now his idea, yeah. you know? But that's fun. The great directors are all like that. Peter Weir, Ron Howard, all the great Michael Mann. All the, I've been very lucky to work with some yeah. wonderful directors. Right. He, Michael Mann like did that. The Insider. Yeah. Right. They just possessed the idea straight away. So I do one take and, you know, I've come 200 metres, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm building this thing up, so yeah. you know. Even though I've said full snot, you know, I didn't realise I was going to get that yeah. full on, right? So every time I try to just sort of, I'll just wipe a bit away because yeah. I'm still up, I've still got 100 metres to yeah. go. Now I've got a spider web yeah. between my nose and my hand, and the, <laughs> I've got another one. I've got to, <laughs> I got to get myself tangled up in this line to snot. Yeah. Go through the thing, go up to the wife, kiss her toe. Really goes cut, and he goes, just a little less snot. <laughs> Hmm. How is Ron Howard different from Ridley Scott, different from Paul Haggis, different from Michael Mann? Well, that's the, in order to really fulfill that question, we should take a couple of hours. You know, Ridley is primarily a, a visual artist, mm -hmm. visual artist that just happens to have um, uh, the ability to take in the mathematics of, of the, the, the technical equations that he needs to deal with as well. He can matrix a room in about five seconds flat, you know. He'll walk into a room, he's got 200 extras or whatever, and he goes, okay, you're, and it's just, you got it's it. like, it's unbelievable, you know. Mm -hmm. It's sort of, it's just one sweep of the eyes and he already knows where he's going to begin and then he'll, he'll go, uh, you know, on after that. You know, all of the guys, you know, that, we, that you've listed there, you know, Let's, it's probably easy to talk of commonality rather than differences because they have, and they, they do it in a different way, but they have that common... All right, well, they have, of, first of, of all, they, they, they get it when an actor has an idea. Yeah, detail and collaboration. And collaboration. That's the right. thing. That's the thing that all of them have. All of them have that. And they have different senses of visualization. They have different mm -hmm. senses of, of how much to push. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've had one director after another to say, it's just, it's a, every actor's different. They know that Russell Crowe needs this just needs to know that you're listening, that he's, the director's listening. I've heard him say that other actors want to do a hundred takes and want to keep going and you have to really say to them, I got it, I got it, because they're never satisfied. Mm -hmm. Other actors simply need, uh, need to know that you, the director, have confidence in them. You believe in me and you mm -hmm. trust me and you want me to do full snot, as you said. That's an Australian or New Zealand phrase? Oh, I, I just, just a disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where it comes from. Yeah, so which are you? I mean, how, what do you want other than a sense of being able to, to listen? I need to know that they're the boss, you know? Do you really? Yeah, 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 yeah. because I'm, I'm going to throw 50 ideas at you, right? Yeah. Take the ones you want, you know, um, and then tell me what, you know, which one of those ones we're using and, and off we go, you know? Um, I like to know that they're, you know, this is going to sound really silly, but I, I like to know that the day will run efficiently. Yes. We'll start on time. Right. And we'll finish on time. Right. You know? Are you prompt? You're always there. You are there I'm, and ready to roll I, at the designated minute. I work minute. the way the director works. If the director <laughs> shows me in the first week he's not capable of beginning at 8 o'clock in the morning. Then you're not either. Then, you know, then I'll sort of like, you know, if, if because... Otherwise, you create a sort of strange sort of tension, you know. Um, you know, if, if somebody's regularly half an hour, 40 minutes later than the times they set, then I start working towards that. Because one thing that's just soul-destroying as an actor, or for me, anyway, personally, is just sitting, waiting to work. 
you know. No, me too. I, 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 like, couldn't, I, you know, I couldn't agree more. I never will sit around with a guest get, before. Let's just get on with it. Yeah. You, know? you know, you and I met two minutes before this started. I couldn't sit with you and talk about things and then come in here and do it well. Well, because we've already burnt out the natural stuff that <laughs> exactly, makes your exactly. show good. Exactly. Because it's, yeah. you know, it's the stuff that, that yeah. comes out. Suppose there's a director who, who you think you can intimidate. Will you intimidate him? There was a time just, uh, just a little while ago so I, I do have a thing about indulgence, you know. I'm not that guy that takes 100 takes. I, I have the ideas, I've worked it out, I know my lines, I come to the set, and I'm working on take one. Right. You know? You've quite, given your best shot on take one. I'm just going for it, you know. Right. I can sometimes I pro uh, will improve it or whatever, or shape it, you know, or then, you know, uh, some the last look, just, you know, take it this way or take it that way, I'm fine, you know. But um, if you get into double figures, it's very unusual. Two or three times, through the course of a whole shoot, will I get into double figures on something if I'm having trouble with it, you know? So never um, more than 10, off, or rarely 10. But yeah, but you know, sometimes the, there is just a tricky thing physically or whatever, and you know, and it will take a few, but for the most part, one, two, three, off you go, you know? You've got to be ready to, to work. So when I come across a, an actor or a, a director who indulges themselves in what they're doing, not not necessarily in, in the moment, um, but when it comes to a director, but in the production, you know. I've got the capability of getting 60 people to mm -hmm. run if I say run, so I'll do that, you know. I don't necessarily need them to run, but I'm yeah. going to indulge myself in the power of the director. Yeah. See, because the power of being a director can so easily be misused, you know, because it's supposed to be about the story. You know, so you've got all these elements around you, and all these things that you can use, and all these things available to you to tell this story. So, um, you know, recently I was working with a guy, and, and um, you know, he, he, I think he was sort of upset by the questions. You know, that you asked. Yeah, why do you keep asking me questions or whatever? So he left his set. You know, and so um, I kind of. Chased him down. I, can't, I, can't I said, I said well, no, "What does chase him down mean?" Well, well, you went after well, to find he, out where he was. Yeah, yeah. I sort of, yeah. I just, where's he gone? Yeah, you know. And he'd, he'd wandered off or whatever, you know. So when he came up to me, uh, he sort of was coming back. And I, I just said, well, "What are you doing? You're not hurting me. You're not hurting any of the other actors. This is your movie, mate. Yes. A film is a director's medium." You've walked off your own set. Now you've made it h even harder for you to complete your, your day. That's the point.